In November 2021, I traveled to just outside Frankfurt in Germany to see Avant-Garde Acoustic because I wanted to learn more about their Horn Hi-Fi speakers and I wanted to experience listening to them. As a company, they really impressed on me just how passionate they are about sound quality. They really care about their customers' experience with their products. But what impressed on me the most was their attention to engineering details for the sound quality of their products. This was extremely evident with their brand new flagship Generation 3 Trio speakers that were in their final development stage ready for launch in 2022. I was fortunate to visit at this time as it meant I got to listen to these amazing hi-fi speakers and Avantgarde's brand new patented amplifier technology called iTron. And I will be explaining this technology shortly. As Avantgarde say, you never forget your first big horn system experience. And I won't forget this one, that's for sure. The new Generation 3 Trio did and didn't sound like how I expected it to. Yes, you can play it loud, and instruments, particularly brass instruments, have a realistic energy to their presentation that I think even the best conventional speakers would struggle to get even close to. The trio sound is large, and they play crazy loud without even stressing any components except your ears. But when you listen to them at more moderate levels, I think it's easier to appreciate their speed, just how quickly they are able to shift their dynamics from low to high energy. And this comes across as extreme dynamic range, with extreme clarity. There is something unique, stand out and special about how hi-fi systems like this present music. It's well beyond mere listening into more something that you experience, possibly a totally new hi-fi experience depending on where you have come from. And this is where Avantgarde's new patented iTron current-based amplification technology really is interesting because they have designed a switch system and I was able to instantly A-B compare and I could very easily hear what iTron was doing and its sonic benefits. And it's not every day a high-end manufacturer launches a flagship speaker, especially one that features patented new amplification technology. So I took the opportunity to ask Avantgarde to tell us more. People ask me, what is the difference between the new model and the old model? And in actual fact, the question would be better the other way around. What's the same? So. In actual fact, we have only four components which are identical uh, in the new model to the old model, which is this big horn uh, of the mid-bass unit, the mid-range horn, and these two covers, the cover of the mid-range horn and the cover of the tweeter horn. So this is the Trio G2. It's a very open structure. We have three floating horns and just with a frame structure holding this. Two uh, rectangular, rails on one side and one round rail at the end. We had no space or place whatsoever for electronics because all the passive crossover components were residing in the, in the rear of the respective driver. We have here a driver alignment where the uh, tweeter is not perfectly in phase with the mid-range and low mid-range driver. So what we did is we had to totally rethink the system. And this has two major reasons. Reason number one, in the new model, due to this de uh, further developed um, super tweeter, we wanted for sound reasons to align the acoustical centers of the drivers all on one acoustical plane. So you see, in the old model, the tweeter was located on the other side, on the opposite side. So we moved it to the single frame side. It is now uh, used on a specific machine rail, so you can fine tune the uh, depth location of the acoustical center in case you tow in or tow out the speaker. So now with the new model, this is the big change to the old version, the drivers are now all aligned perfectly on an acoustical um, plane. So all the frequencies and all the sound waves reach the listener at precisely the same millisecond. In this frame construction behind, we have a special um, foot adapter yeah, it's a, it's a solid piece, aluminium injection molded damping element where all the energy and vibration will focus and will be centered. This then can be equipped 
with normal foot, so you have it on, on a floor, or if you like, you can spike it with any spike available on the market. And what we are very proud of, you have the possibility to really fine balance the system and, and even on uneven floors, but you don't see it, it's nicely hidden. This is the old tweeter uh, of the G2 uh, uh, trio. You see there is a fairly big magnet and a relatively small short horn. Compared to the new G3 version, where we have a very long throw horn and this driver itself got much, much smaller. So what we have here is we increase the size of the horn, so we have more horn and we have less driver. The co difference between these two drivers is they both have a sensitivity of 109 decibel, one watt, one meter. But this new version, because the diaphragm is much, much lighter than the previous model, is capable of reproducing high frequencies up to 28,000 hertz. So it's not only a tweeter, it's, it's like a super tweeter design. So with the Nature Cap, we, we really went beyond previous technology. We have purely uh, folded aluminium, which is in a natural, biological, degradable oil. So that's why we call it Nature Cup, not only because of the sound characteristic, but as well uh, the way we do it. What we did as well, we not just glued this capacitor onto the PCB board, but what we designed is a special um, mounting adapters for this capacitor so it can be screwed and is really very nicely fit to the PCB board. This is the new base driver of the new Space Horn because the new Space Horn has a very long horn throat. We have two meters. We need a lot of power to overcome the radiation impedance of this long horn. So we designed this new driver. It has what you see here, a very big voice coil. The previous model had a voice coil of uh, four inch, this new one has a voice call of six inch. So we have, with this big voice call, much more power onto the magnet than in the previous model. This is very important, so we, we uh, really adjust this driver technology to the new space horn, horn technology. And if we compare the old uh, base horn compare it with the new space horn. The new space horn has a sensitivity between 40 and 120 hertz, which is plus five decibels. So this is more than, nearly more than four times as much powerful than the previous model. An avant-garde acoustic in the first place is a normal passive speaker, you could say. So it is a speaker in that section up here that has a passive crossover inside, three-way crossover. As we have the luxury to design our drivers ourselves, our mid-range driver, low mid-range driver and tweeter have an impedance, so a resistance of the voice coil, that makes them sound at the same level. Instead of using resistors or resistor networks, to uh, adjust the volume, the SPL of each driver so that they match and come to the uh, same level, we apply this resistance where it really works and not just dissipates energy in the voice coil. So this has 16 ohm, this has 27 ohms, and this has another 16 ohms of impedance, which makes sure that they are anyway at the same loudness level. So our crossovers are just um, consisting of the parts that really do the division. In our crossover, we also do something that we call a polarization, polarization plus circuit, which means that always two capacitors, not just one, two capacitors are sharing the work. And this we do because where the two capacitors uh, sit uh, uh, close to each other and are connected to each other, we apply a bias voltage that reaches 100 volt. We make the electrical field always pointing in the same direction so that the musical signal is just modulating the field, which it does much more willingly, which means we can transmit finer detail. 
I decided after speaking to Avant Garde CEO Holger Fromm, Executive Manager Armin Kras, and the technical mind of the company Matthias Roof about iTron, I would try and consolidate everything that they told me about their new current based amplification technology and hopefully I can make it easier to understand. But firstly, what is it? It's important to start with some context about how a loudspeaker works and for this we need to look at Ohm's law which is current equals voltage divided by resistance. And a loudspeaker driver converts electrical energy into acoustic sound by current flowing through the driver's voice coil that is suspended in a magnetic field. And it's the magnitude of the current flow that causes the acceleration of the driver diaphragm and not the magnitude of the voltage. Ohm's law is important to consider because it shows that current is directly related to the relationship between voltage and resistance. If there is more resistance, then there will be less current. And this is important when you look at a speaker driver's behavior because we know that speaker drivers vary massively when it comes to resistance, often termed as impedance, based on the frequencies that they are playing. And this is unavoidable. And it means the speaker's behavior or acceleration and the sound it produces is not consistent or linear through its frequency range because the resistance is constantly changing and the current is changing too and the speaker's driver behavior is not going to be linear most importantly to the incoming music signal. Avantgarde have produced a set of graphs to try and demonstrate what is happening and it's important to keep in mind like we spoke about before that it's the current behavior within the voice core of the speaker driver that is important here. If we look at the left graph, you can see the voltage input, or really the music signal in blue, the voltage output in green from a conventional amplifier tracks the music blue input voltage or signal very well. However, in red, you can see the current behavior happening in the voice call, and that is the music output. And you can see it has a delay and doesn't track the blue line or the music signal well at all. There is a distinct delay in the peak, which is not ideal. Looking at the graph for iTron current amplification, you can see the same blue music voltage signal input. You can see different and what appears to be worse voltage output behavior in green. But Avantgarde say it's the red line, the current output behavior that is important because it's how the voice call in the driver is behaving. And you can see how much faster it peaks and how much better it tracks the blue line or the voltage or music input signal. And again, if we compare them both side by side, you can hopefully see the difference in the red lines and how they are tracking the blue lines. And it's easy to see the iTron is doing a better job. So I'm sure you are sitting there now wishing you had iTron amplification in your system and wondering when standalone iTron amplifiers will be available to buy. Sadly, I don't think we will ever see that. There is a whole host of challenges and downsides to the technology which makes it probably and I'm guessing here, never suitable for mainstream passive speakers. Avantgarde have been extremely clever with this technology and are using it specifically within the G3 Trio because they have control of the speaker and the amplification and the active crossover. And they can make this technology work and you can hear what it does very clearly. I thought the G3 Trio sounded better with iTron. The speaker sounded more coherent, better focused and with better timing. And I think as humans, we are extremely susceptible to the timing of music so once we hear better timed music it's hard to listen to worst timed music it takes a bit of time to readjust no pun intended so i hope you enjoyed this deep dive look into avant-garde's new generation 3 trio speakers and their new itron current based amplification technology if you'd like to know more i have already created a video where i interview avant-garde's ceo holger from make sure you check that video out and i'll link it up there for you i want to finish the video with a big question are horn speakers more appealing to you now let me know down below in the comment section and make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already of course you have see you all soon thanks for watching take care